For more than a century, comic books and graphic novels have been a platform for generations of young writers to share the depths of their creativity. But for many young writers of color, that platform appeared to be harder to reach. The general idea was that, you know, white guys wrote comics, black guys and other people of color would draw them because there's always been many, many black and Latino and Asian and so forth, illustrators for Marvel, DC, for everybody going back years. Brandon Easton is a writer for such titles as Truth and Justice, Mr. Miracle and Legends of the Dark Knight. Easton is also a screenwriter for such shows as Marvel's Agent Carter. His love for comics began as a young child growing up in Baltimore. It was a comic book shop right across the street from my elementary school. And, you know, <laughs> much to the chagrin of the owner of the store, we used to like bum rush the store every Friday when books, back in the old days when books were released. My mom had this tradition where every Friday after work, she would take me to the newsstand and she would buy herself soap opera magazines and she would buy me comic books. For writer Joseph Illich, that was every Friday in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Illich is the executive editor of veteran title Heavy Metal and a senior editor of content for all of DC Comics' Batman titles. An internship at a young age with independent Black-owned publisher Milestone Media was his entry into the business. Milestone gave me purpose and it showed me that my road in life was a valid road and that there was a future as a business person telling the stories and creating the opportunities for Black people in comic books and graphic novels. But getting into that world professionally was not without challenge, as both learned early on that the comic book industry was not as colorful as its product behind the scenes. You always feel like your responsibility is to produce quality because if you don't, you will be used as the excuse for the system to say, well, see, this is what happens when you give them opportunities, right? The difference is, is that black writers had a ridiculously high bar of entry into comics, whereas many white, especially white male creators, could do very little and get handed major franchises. And both men agree, the unparalleled global success of one franchise in particular has led to a representation within the comic book and superhero movie realms never seen up till now. Black Panther was the end of the Hollywood lie. And the Hollywood lie was that films about black people with black leads could not succeed internationally. Proving that there is an audience. I mean, being a Marvel property helps, but no one had to go see that movie. And they did in droves repeatedly, globally. And if Black Panther caused the comic book industry to be woke in terms of bridging the color gap, only time will tell just how long the industry stays awake. Because in comics, again, when you look at who runs it, they would rather hire people who are not from the black community to write black stories and hire black people who are competent and have lived it. It's just how it's been. There are fewer black executives behind the scenes than there were in past decades. So we need to move forward in that way. Another thing that we need to do to move forward is we need to accept the existence of black narratives. Antoine Lewis, Fox 5 News.